For more perspective on the U.S. African Leaders Summit, I'm joined by Rahma Wright, Chief Executive Officer, Yelin Enterprises. Rahma is a member of the President's Advisory Council on Doing Business in Africa, where she advises U.S. President Joe Biden through the Secretary of Commerce on ways to strengthen commercial engagement between the United States in African countries. Rahma, it's a pleasure to have you in the studio today. Thank you for having me. Let's start right there where your job uh, is about strengthening the commercial engagement between African countries yes. and the U.S. What does that really entail? Yeah, well, the President's Advisory Council on Doing Business in Africa is one way of doing that. It was established in 2014 under the Obama administration, and it is a way for the private sector to engage with the public sector in terms of providing recommendations and helping to guide U.S. trade engagement strategy. So what we do is we meet, we look at various sectors, whether it's health, agriculture, women, SMEs, and it's uh, made up of different size businesses. So very large companies to smaller companies like myself. And it's a really amazing opportunity to provide insights into the experiences that we're having engaging with trade in, in Africa. So you've been on the park uh, several years now, you know, I believe so. And uh, But how is your enterprise? You just mentioned it barely. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> how does your enterprise tie into this kind of summit? This is high profile. So many African leaders coming to the U.S. and so much to talk about. Yeah, you, you're right. I was appointed uh, during the inaugural establishment of the President's Advisory Council uh, because of the fact that I b work and build ethical supply chains that incorporate women-owned cooperatives into my business model. So my company, we source plant-based African ingredients, shea butter right now from northern Ghana, um, working in communities of where the product originates from. And we help women take a raw material, transform it into a value-added product that we then incorporate into a line of personal care. So body moisturizers and cleansers. And by doing that, it increases women's income five times their country's minimum wage. And so that connection between uh, local rural women and the work that they're doing and connecting it to U.S. markets is part of the uh, contributions I make, at, in, the contributions I make on the advisory council, really figuring out how to establish African products in the U.S. market that also benefits local communities. And that's what we'll be looking at as this summit kicks off. But tell us a little bit about your connection to the continent of Africa. Oh, I have a deep connection. I'm Ghanaian. Ghanaian I'm on my mom's side. Um, and for me, I've always, ever since I was little, I knew I would work in Africa. I've had the opportunity to travel to 20 countries on the continent. One day, I hope to travel to all 54. <laughs> and for me, I, I think it's so important um, being part of the diaspora um, to utilize the resources um, and the tools that I have to reach back and contribute to economic and trade development in Africa. So looking at uh, what has happened to the globe uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the impact has really hit the continent of Africa very hard. Yeah. What do you expect that is going to be different in this summit when these African leaders begin the summit uh, with the United States? Yeah, well, actually, I think that Africa as a whole responded much better to COVID-19 than a lot of other regions. And I don't think Africans are being given enough credit for the fact that they did not see a widespread of the numbers that you saw in other parts of the world. Um, one of the things that's different in terms of the U.S. Africa Business Forum, which is happening next week in Washington, D.C., is the engagement of the diaspora. In previous forums, they didn't have an agenda item that focused on diaspora and the civil society, but now they do. And it, for the first time, you'll be able to see an entire day's event surrounding the diaspora, surrounding youth and SMEs, and also engaging the civil society. When you talk about commercial enterprise and engagement between the continent and Africa, uh, a lot of African leaders are expecting to see what the U.S. would want them to, you know, trade in with the U.S. and what in return, you know, they might want to get out of the United States. Maybe give us a little highlight on what happens here. Yeah, so I think that um, having these types of initiatives and the, these forums and these dialogue is the first step. 
We want to have trade engagement that's mutually beneficial, trade engagement that supports job creation here in the U.S. as well as job creation in Africa. And being able to bring decision makers in the same room, not only the public sector but also the private sector, allows for the dialogue to happen, for conversation to happen, so that there can be priorities established from both sides so that everyone's interests is included in the, the strategies and the, the signing of the various MOUs and the decisions that will be made. We're looking forward to it. The Voice of America will be covering this summit extensively. <laughs> yeah, and right here on Africa 54 as well. Thank you very much, Rahma. Thank you.